This is a print published in New York in 1849 by E. Whitefield, entitled View of Hartford, Connecticut from the Deaf and Dumb Asylum. The Deaf and Dumb Asylum, later renamed the American School for the Deaf, was located on Asylum Hill. The school later moved to West Hartford, and the headquarters of the Hartford Insurance Company was built on the hill. This print features a view from that hill to the east in 1849, looking towards downtown Hartford and the Connecticut River. In this video, I'm going to identify some of the prominent buildings visible in this print, most of which are now lost, but some of which do survive today. Here's another version of the view that was not printed in color, but I have it at a higher resolution, so we can focus in on different things. First of all, in the area below the main view, there are four pictures of Hartford landmarks. There's the famous Charter Oak, which was still standing when this was published in 1849. It would come down in a storm in 1856. There's a view of the Deaf and Dumb Asylum from which the main view above was drawn. It also shows the buildings of Trinity College on the left, which were located where the state capitol is today. And then there's a picture of the old state house with the American Hotel in the background. And on the right is the steeple of the Universalist Church. Moving on to the main view, there are figures strolling around the foreground in what I assume are the grounds of the asylum. Next door, fronting Asylum Street, is a house which appears to have columns on its front facade. I wonder if this could be the Greek Revival style house that once stood at 638 Asylum Avenue. Torn down in the 1920s or 30s, it was pictured in a Hartford Current article in 1916. There's another prominent house a little further west. I think this may be the house that was once the home of the poet Lydia Sigourney. It was built in 1820 and demolished in 1938. Most of the recognizable buildings are on or near Main Street. So we'll zoom in there. In the era before skyscrapers, it's not surprising that the most prominent things in view are church steeples will move from north to south. The northernmost church in this view is the old First Methodist Episcopal Church, built in 1821 at the corner of Trumbull and Chapel Streets. It served as a church until 1860, when the Methodists built a new church on Asylum Avenue. They later moved even further west to Farmington Avenue. The former church building, bereft of its steeple, survived until 1916. Interestingly, it was used as an office and woodworking shop by the architect John C. Meade from 1879 to 1889. The next steeple is that of the Third Congregational Church, also called the North Church, built in 1825 at the corner of Main, Morgan, and Village Streets. The first sermon in this church was preached by Reverend Lyman Beecher, father of the author Harriet Beecher Stowe. From 1833 to 1859, the pastor of this church was the famous Horace Bushnell. In 1867, the congregation moved to Asylum Street, across from Bushnell Park, and became the Park Church. They later merged with the Farmington Avenue Church to form Emmanuel Congregational Church, which is located near the Mark Twain House. The old North Church building steeple was removed, and it was converted to retail use and had a music hall. It eventually became Harrop's Furniture Store, which burned down in a fire in 1932. The next church has an interesting history. It was originally erected in 1795 as the first Christ Church, Hartford's very first Episcopal Church building. In 1830, the Episcopalians sold it to the Catholic Diocese, and it became the city's first Catholic Church, called the Church of the Holy and Undivided Trinity. 
The building was destroyed by fire in 1853, four years after this print was published. An amusing anecdote is related by Rev. James H. O'Donnell in his History of the Catholic Diocese of Hartford, published in 1900. He writes that when the Episcopalians were arranging to sell the church to the Catholics, quote, Bishop Brownell, the Protestant Episcopal bishop, was present when Bishop Fenwick was examining the church. In the course of the conversation, Bishop Brownell remarked, Well, Bishop Fenwick, as we have a fine new church building, we will let you have the old one. Bishop Fenwick retorted, Yes, you have a fine new religion, and we will keep the old one, unquote. The new Christ Church, which the Episcopalians then built, is the next one in this view. And that's the Gothic-style church, which has been the cathedral of the Episcopal Diocese in Connecticut since 1919, and still stands today at the corner of Main and Church Streets. Not far from it, on the other side of Main Street, where the Richardson or Cheney building now stands, was a building that served as the first Baptist church from 1831 to 1853. It then became known as Turo Hall from 1856 to 1876, while it was the synagogue of Congregation Beth Israel. The building was destroyed by a fire in 1876, and the congregation built a new synagogue on Charter Oak Avenue, that is now the Charter Oak Cultural Center. They later moved to Farmington Avenue in West Hartford. Moving further south, and now on the west side of Main Street, was a building erected in the early 1830s as the Free Church, later called the Fourth Congregational Church. When the congregation moved to a new church further up Main Street around 1850, the old building, like several others I've been talking about, had its steeple removed and became a commercial building called Melodian Hall. It was eventually replaced by the Wise Smith Department Store in 1897. The next steeple belongs to a church that stood on the corner of Trumbull and Asylum Streets, where the old Charter Oak Bank or Brownstone Building stands today. It was built in 1846 as the Unitarian Church of the Savior. I explained in another video how the building was moved in 1860 to Sigourney Street to become the original Trinity Episcopal Church, which was then rebuilt in the 1890s. Our next building is not a church. Instead, it's the old State House, which of course survives today. Across Main Street from the old State House stood Union Hall, built in 1827. As I've mentioned in another video, Union Hall was replaced by the Connecticut Mutual Life Insurance Building in 1870. Just south of the old State House, on Central Row, was the Universalist Church built in 1824. In 1860, the Universalists moved to a new church further south on Main Street, where the Travelers Building is today. They would later move to Asylum Hill and eventually to West Hartford. At the corner of Central Row and Main Street was another early 19th century building that had once housed Joseph Stewart's Museum and also the Hartford Times newspaper. It was replaced by the Hungerford and Cone Building in 1856 and then by the Hartford, Connecticut Trust Company Building in 1920, which still stands there today. Another readily identifiable building that's not a church is the old Hartford County Jail that was erected in 1793 at the corner of Trumbull and Pearl Streets. The building would later be the home of the printing company that would become Case Lockwood and Brainerd, who would also replace the old jail building with their new headquarters in 1866. The next building to the south, 
is also one that survives today. It's the Center Congregational Church, built in 1807. The next prominent building in view is the facade of the Wadsworth Athenaeum, which of course also survives today. Just down Main Street from the Athenaeum in 1849 stood another church, it's St. John's Episcopal Church, erected in 1842 and designed by Henry Austin of New Haven. The church was built of brownstone, but the spire on top was made of wood, which eventually decayed to the point where it had to be removed in 1875. In 1907, the church was demolished to make way for the Wadsworth Athenaeum's new Morgan Memorial Building. St. John's Episcopal Church moved to a new building erected in 1908 just across the city line on Farmington Avenue in West Hartford. Here again is the house I said I thought was the Lydia Sigourney House. Returning to Main Street, our next church is a Greek Revival building, erected in about 1832 at the corner of Main and Sheldon Streets. It was built as the South Baptist Church. In 1852, a new South Baptist was erected across the street on the location where today is the Central Baptist Church of 1926. So this old South Baptist building was next used as the first Presbyterian church until 1868 when the Presbyterians moved to Capitol Avenue. This old church, like so many others, was then converted into retail space and eventually torn down. Our last church, and the one furthest south in this view, is another one that survives today. It's the South Congregational Church, built in 1827. So of the 12 churches that are shown in this view, only three of them are still standing today. On the far south of this view are the group of buildings that made up the original campus of Trinity College. I made a recent video about the lost buildings of Trinity College, so please check it out. I'll link it in the description below. Trinity was located next to Bushnell Park in the early 1820s until it moved to its current Summit Street campus in the 1870s to make way for the construction of the Connecticut State Capitol. I hope you enjoyed watching my video about the 1849 view of Hartford. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. And thanks again for watching.